Hello and welcome to my second videos about macros and developments. Uh, we recorded a macro in the previous uh, videos that will generate uh, this uh, titles uh, by merging uh, cells A through G. And then also we added the today's date in uh, the cell H1. And now we're going to be actually going uh, through a little bit more of a challenge, but it's not really a big deal if we think about it. Uh, I'm going to go to write a, uh, for example, in many, many situations, we have a need to do some calculation. And the calculation, uh, we notice that is going to be repeated over and over. So we don't want to really uh, to write the formulas ourselves because this function happens to be not part of the list of the function that exists in Excel. Uh, I'm going to give you something trivial or basically nothing to it is let's say I have uh, a need to calculate the volume of a cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is basically uh, uh, pi, which is I could get it from the symbol. If I don't get it from the symbol insert here, uh, I might not be able of actually, actually I cannot get anything in the mode of in editing or my editing mode. Uh, I could look here for pi, here's pi, okay, so we could go ahead and get it, and pi is multiplied by uh, the height multiplied by r raised to the second power. That's basically what is, uh, here we go, even I could make it looks like real function yeah, done by a mathematician, and let's go ahead and say this is the volume, and here we go. Of course, I could go ahead and make all of them the same text, then or it looks good. And maybe even maybe I'll point that out. That's what the mathematician will give us or somebody who really knows about the volume of objects. It's pi multiplied by h multiplied by r raised to the second power. If I want to do that manually like I have been doing, I need to look at uh, uh, what is pi? Pi, I could get it from Excel. I will get it from Excel. And also, I'm looking for the height and the radius. And of course, I need to go ahead and do the volume. So every time I do that, I have to say, okay, uh, this is 7, 8, and it's going to be pi, which is pi as a function multiplied we don't have to really guess about 3.14 or 3.14519. Let pi take care of that for us. Multiply by the height, which is right here. Multiply by uh, 8 raised to the second power. And you notice that I have to recall this every time I use it. If I'm constantly using it, then I have to really uh, uh, either <coughs> call it, or once I do it for once, of course, it's going to be easy to use the fill handle to do it for the rest. But what about if I could actually record a or a create a function, I call it, let's say, uh, my, my volume or my cylinder, okay, uh, or I could say VOL cylinder. So from now on, when I call VOL cylinder, it's going to do the calculation for me without having to even look at my notes or to ask somebody next to me, do you remember what is the volume of a cylinder? And it will be available for me through the whole uh, list of, uh, you know, uh, I could put it personal macro, it will be available for me, or I could go ahead and uh, you know, just have it for this workbook. I'm going to stay with the, this book because I don't want to have uh, macros all over my Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and delete, leave this actually as it is. And I'm going to write a, a function that is going to be available for me forever if I want. And now we're going to go to developer. And, and here in the developer, of course, we are in editing mode. I cannot get anything. Uh, notice here, I'm going to actually maximize this so I'll be able to see it. This is our macro, the initial macro that we wrote. But here, uh, I could go ahead and let me go ahead and scroll this all the way up. So I'll we'll see what I'm going to be writing here. Uh, I'm going to be writing a function, starting with the word function. So I'm creating my own function and I'm going to call it VO, VO cylinder. So what does that mean? I'm creating the name of that function. 
and it could be Sam cylinder, it could be John cylinder, it could be Justin uh, cylinder, it could be Taylor cylinder, it could be anything. Listen, I have to remind you that there are rules in how we call our function. It should start with a letter. It should not have a space. It should not use some of the name of the function or keyword that we use in Excel. And you could have an underscore in it if you want. As long as it starts with a letter, you could have put a digit. For example, if you have a three shapes to calculate, then you could say like volume shape one, volume shape, I mean, uh, area shape one, area shape two, area shape three, four, five, whatever. But make sure that you always start with a letter. And function usually get something not all the time you don't have to really like pi for example it was a built-in function i just had to write the name of it followed by parentheses but what do i really need to send to this function as parameter so it will return for me the volume i need to send height okay and I need to send, in this case, I'm not really specifying the data type because this is completely an introduction to functions. Uh, of course, I could specify the data type of the height if it's going to be uh, real numbers like double or single or an integer. In this case, it has to be the default one, which is really a real value. It's called double. Also, the radius. A radius is going to be the other variable that I wanted to pass. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and notice that later I'm going to be sending a value for height and the value for the radius regardless of what that value then we're going to return something how do we return a value from the uh, function by first of all putting the variable or the name of the function as a variable to the left side of this and we're going to assign that variable, I'm not saying this variable is equal to, I'm going to say assigning whatever calculation on the right side of this statement, which is going to be subjected to the rule of order that we learned previously. And it's going to be a pi, which is going to be actually a function built in Excel. Since pi, I cannot access it directly from uh, here, I wanted to go ahead and call it through something called worksheet because I could use that function and dot, it will allow me to access all these function that build in Excel directly from here. And I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and give me pi. Pi multiplied by height and multiplied by radius. I as exactly, I did it in the sheet. However, here I'm using the variable name, not the cell address name. And that's it. That's it. You, you don't have to remember this if you are happy with the fact that you wanted to put 3.14. But I'm trying to help you here to show you that you could access a, a pi function directly from Excel, even though you are in a different environment, which is the programming side of Excel. It's called VBA. And I'm not going to really go beyond this scope or beyond this difficulty because I'm going to write another function or a couple function, and that's it. So here, if I, if I, uh, I'm confirmed that I'm going to be done. Uh, I remember now the name of the function is vol, vol, VOL cylinder. It's going to be receiving two variables as parameters. And it's going to take the pi from Excel, multiply that by the height, multiply by the radius, multiply, raise the, the second power. And whatever resulted here is going to go ahead and give it to the name of the function, which is exactly the same word here. This is the function here. You have to really assign the calculation that you will be returning from the function to the same name of that function. So don't try to call this John. Don't try to call this uh, Susie. Don't try to call it my volume. Whatever you agreed with yourself to call it here, that's what you will call it here. And make sure to not misspell. I'm notorious for my spelling. So I always like to see when I don't get the response from uh, Excel, I'll see probably I misspelled something. And I'll show you how to really avoid that. So let's go ahead and go back to Excel. I could go from here directly. And notice here it is. And when I start equal sign, I would call vol cylinder exactly like I would call any other function in Excel, like sum, uh, average, uh, PMT. So when I type VOL, notice Excel is 
bringing me that function. And not only this, it's going to probably help me to finish this by calling VOL by hitting the tab key. And now I know that VOL takes one variable. It's called the height, comma, because I'm passing two variables to it. And it's going to take the other radius. And it's going to now receive G6, which is 7, the height, which is going to multiply that by the pi, by the uh, 7, which is in G height, after raising that H6 to the second power. And here we go. Notice this is the same exact value we got before. And if I have 100,000 cylinders to, to calculate their volume, I could do it in a heartbeat. Let's take another example before we conclude this subject. I'm going to go back to the Visual Basic. Of course, let's get out of the editing mode here. And I'm going to create another function. And let's call it this time you know, uh, where we're going to convert a, a Fahrenheit degree into a centigrade. So I'm going to call this function uh, from F to uh, C. Notice here I'm actually using uh, abbreviation Fahrenheit to centigrade. And I'm going to be receiving a Fahrenheit. I'm going to call it F as a variable. That's fine for now. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, say F2C, that's the value I'm going to return, which is going to be F, the value that I'm going to be sending to the function, minus 32, and the whole thing is multiplied by 5 divided by 9. So again, if I have the need to convert a Fahrenheit constantly to a centigrade degree, uh, this is a function I could use very easily from now on. It's called FTOC. I will pass the Fahrenheit into that function. It's going to take whatever the value, minus 32 multiplied by 5 divided by 9. And that is going to be stored temporarily by the FTOC, which is going to return it back to Excel. So let's go ahead and test this. I know uh, 212 in Fahrenheit is equal to uh, uh, 100 degree in centigrade. I know also that 32 degrees in Fahrenheit is a zero centigrade. Let's test if that is the case. So if I have here Fahrenheit, the degree here, and I have 212, and I have 32, and I want to figure, find out that as a centigrade, which is going to be the name of the function, which is F2. Look here how it tells me. And I'm going to pass this to it. And hopefully we'll get the 100, which is absolutely correct. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that the 32 is going to be 0. You could practice by actually creating a function in your own that will receive a centigrade and will turn it into a Fahrenheit, which is easily accessible through Googling that formula or that equation before you turn it into a function. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. This has been a pleasure to record these two videos for you. Here is Dr. Sam Hijazi wishing you a wonderful day.